church, you gotta look at the first 70 years, and I think, you know, we're thankful for those that made all the sacrifices that built the school in 1953. Now we're in 2023, and I think what's made this school successful is the faithfulness of the people that love the Lord, and they love this school, and they want a place for their their children to come, that they know that Christ is number one in the classroom, it's number one in athletics. It's just a continuation of that being number one. As long as we put that first, everything else will fall into place. I started teaching here in 1954, the second year of the school, and there was only one building, which is the grade school building now. The uh, elementary is on one side, there was three classrooms, senior high or high school was on the other side with three classrooms. So there's first and second, one grade, third and fourth, another grade, fifth and sixth. And the high school was across the hall. So we went with just the one building for some time. And then we finally built another building, a high school building. And uh, we were really excited when the gym was put between the two buildings and there was a sidewalk that connected everything. We just had a lot to learn together and we had no windows in the building and no doors and so we had some old desks and uh, I remember in particular our hand towels in the bathroom were actual towels. We didn't have paper towels. Everyone was very willing to give of their time and what money they had but it was a very sacrificial time. From day one, I recall my parents and others uh, physically coming up to lay the foundation for the school. I mean, the physical foundation for the first building. It was volunteer work on the part of parents and school employees. Didn't have money to build the buildings without all the labor and assistance. And that spirit of uh, family togetherness permeated the school from day one all through the my experience with it. We had the naive notion that if we could just get every Christian in Greene County uh, in this area to give a, a dollar a month. But we started out a massive campaign to us. For that time it was massive. It spread over three counties. <laughs> but we were going to get members of the church to give a dollar a month. We would uh, uh, if, if we could get every member, every family, just every family in the church in, in a wide area here, northeast Arkansas, in Boot Hill, Missouri, to give a dollar a month a family, it would, it would have supported the school. We knew, of course, we were not sufficiently naive to think that we could operate the school on a dollar a week uh, tuition. Uh, Four dollars a month just wouldn't cut it. But, and we knew that, but we depended on the support of those who had been influenced by Christian education, who were willing to give, supplement that meager income from tuition. And then we relied heavily upon teachers who would teach for nothing, or nearly nothing. Everything was concrete block in those days. And I was standing by a wall one day and I just looked over at one block and I realized that some Christian person, man or woman in the community had given the money for that, for Christian education. I don't, I don't know why that made such an impression, but it really did. It just, just struck with me that this is something that no one was obligated to do, no one had to do. It's just that somebody had donated 25 cents for that one block so that Christian boys and girls could have an opportunity to study about Christ and to learn about the gospel. I appreciate so much the memories. I remember singing in chorus and traveling and singing for congregations and we'd try to raise money for CRA and doing that. We'd travel all over the United States. And of course I played all the sports while I was here. That meant so much to me. It's really what got me involved in becoming a coach after I graduated from here. A senior high men's track team has won the district championship 20 consecutive years. The track program was going quite well, and uh, we were doing pretty good in that. Probably more successful in track than basketball. Uh, and uh, that kind of runs from a tradition thing. Uh, we begin to win, and when you begin to win, then it feeds other kids to work harder. And uh, just that uh, one or two years in a row, we had some good athletes who started winning, and other kids wanted to get involved. And before you know it, you were getting everybody involved that could help you. 
It's hard to explain the number of people that had the effect on my life as I grew up here with their Christian example. They're guiding me, correcting me. When I graduated as an 18 year old, I think I was ahead of the curve in developing my spiritual life. I had the privilege of enrolling in CRA when I was a first grader, the first year the school opened. I attended all 12 years here. I also served 20 years as superintendent. Uh, also served on the board later. I started working at CRA my first year out of college. I still had the draft hanging over my head during those days. I was hanging around waiting to decide what to do there and I saw Brother Emmett Smith and uh, he wanted to know if I could teach the six weeks in the summer. They had a six week session and then they broke in the fall for the people to work in the harvest. So I said, sure, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to help you out in six weeks. During that term, I had an automobile accident which bunged up a knee, so I finished the year. I taught the whole year, 5960, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was the first year the school ever played their scholastic sports. I happened to be the coach, even though my background wasn't in coaching, uh, but it was something new, and the fans uh, supported it. Even though we had a losing season, we had some fun uh, in the old Quonset hut. He told me when I asked him when I came if I would uh, feel comfortable coaching athletics. I think the decision had already been made that the academy would compete interscholastically for the first time. I told him that that wouldn't bother me. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a coach by profession, but uh, that would be a challenge for me. It just got me thinking that I might be in the wrong profession. I had majored in accounting. I liked accounting. I enjoyed it, but I thoroughly enjoyed that first year at Crowley's Ridge Academy. Maybe the most exciting is the most recent, but it appears the most recent one and the most exciting might be possibly the new Emmett Smith Auditorium because we had never ever had a suitable meeting area for our students. I mean, from 1953, we couldn't get all of our kids in that one end of the dining room, which was our auditorium, when all the kids were there together. Uh, all, even when we had the new auditorium in 1975, we built a little auditorium in front of the, the administrative offices. It was really nice at the time, but quickly, you know, we couldn't even get our, our students in there. The student body was too large. And so, really, this is the first time we've been able to have a facility that not only can we get all of our students and, and employees in, we still have space for two or three hundred other people in there with us at the same time. Emmett Smith, I'll start with him. He spoke in our chapel once a week and uh, he had all these Br'er Rabbit stories to tell but he always worked it in with our Christianity. Emmett Smith was a very giving sacrificial person. He and his wife Emma gave up so much to be a part of this. He would not ask you to do anything that he wouldn't do. I've seen him many times out working real hard on the buildings. One memory I have of Emmett Smith, him with the Jeep and a plow, digging footings for the buildings. I'll tell you this about Emmett though, there's nobody in the world who could work as hard as he could for as long as he could. Uh, I've been in situations with him where uh, most people would have said, we can't possibly handle this, let's quit. For example, we poured three slabs of concrete on a sand floor, <laughs> and the water went out of that stuff so fast, Emmett was trying to keep up with that. He was the only one who knew how to finish concrete. He would come when we had wood stoves, and he would come mornings and build fire before school, and when he would go down the road, he would see if there was smoke coming out of all the different pipes sticking out the windows. So I just remember not only Emmett, but just about anyone who worked here, it was a sacrificial. Call it what you will, he had that kind of influence on not just me, but many other people. There were people here who were working for, some people would say, but working for nothing. Well. It wasn't exactly nothing, but it wasn't far above that. And he had the ability of impressing upon people the need of whatever he's trying to start, whatever he's involved with, whether it's the school, whether it's the children's home, whether it's the, at that time, the junior college. And he did it in a way that, that uh, just made you feel good in helping him. In that he was able to sell his ideas to other people, instill them to where they then they sort of became their ideas in that sense. 
So uh, he had, I guess, as good a support as you could really expect, or more than you could expect in building it, because everyone around came and really worked hard and worked well. I, I just had that much appreciation for him and respect for him. And I still do have that appreciation and respect for his memory. One of the high school girl's brother became interested in me and I in him, and so she would carry the messages back and forth, and I wound up marrying Jerry Gatlin. He was very much part of the school. He uh, drove many buses. He was a mechanic. He uh, was on the board, and so he was very much a part. And then we had three children. All of them were educated here, and teaching them was quite a challenge, but I taught all three of them. And then my son, I had to be under him because he was superintendent here for a few years. So I was working at the bookstore, and Mr. Austin uh, approached me at church, I believe, and said he would like to talk to me about work at CRA. So I came over to CRA and visited with him. He taught me right into coming and work for him. So I left the bookstore and came to CRA, and it was one of the best decisions I've made in my life. I uh, worked here for 42 years, and if I had it to do over, I would step right back into it and do it again. I have a love for CRA that I don't think I'll ever lose that love for the school. When I started thinking about being a leader in the school, one thing I looked at was who came before me, Mr. Mac Ramsey. He meant a, a lot to me because he was one of the most selfless leaders that I've ever met. And he always put God first in all that he did. And you saw that in all his relationships. I thought to myself, how did he do that every day? Because he was at everything and he was there for everyone. I thought to myself, for me to be able to do that, I have to put God number one in everything in, in the school and then everything else will fall in place. At the Academy, our mission really is to teach everything that we teach from a Christian worldview in all of our classes. And we want it to be the most important thing that as the kids walk away, they realize they've, they've gotten to experience something more because faith is interwoven into everything that we do. I feel like we have a place where academically, athletically, socially, but most importantly, spiritually, kids have the opportunity to excel. We had chapel every day, and I'm not sure a lot of schools get to experience that. And having Bible every day, I love teaching Bible, but I could incorporate Bible into science, into math, into history, and, and that was always, that was a really special thing about teaching here. Being exposed daily to the Christian teachers and the staff here reinforced that influence in my life. It was uh, very meaningful to me. I think it molded my spirituality throughout my life. I spent 12 years in, as a student and then some 25 years as a teacher. And uh, it's had a, a lasting effect that uh, I'm so appreciative to everyone who uh, gave me that opportunity to be here. The men like Gerald Howard, A.J. Hendricks, Emmett Smith, E.J. Moore, Darrell Austin, Harold Austin, Hayden Carter and Rick Watson and others. I can still hear A.J. Hendricks uh, and see him holding up a shiny new penny in chapel and leading, love is like a lucky penny. Give it away and you'll have plenty. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. Now this is a general principle, not a hard and fast rule, but I believe CRA can assist any family in attaining that goal of training up a child in the way he should go and set them up for a happy, successful life. It was the best decision that my parents ever made for me. And that was over 50 years ago and still impacts me to this very day. And when I enrolled at Curley's Ridge Academy, um, I was a second grader. And so even recognizing back then that teachers really take you under their wing and they treat you as so much more than just a head count um, or a number on a piece of paper, you mean something to them. Um, and then to also have classmates who didn't know me at all coming in, but then be immediately befriended me. And um, a lot of those relationships, I still have those today. 
I feel like the friendliness that has always been here and the willingness to help one another has been something that I've noticed from the first and I come back and I still notice it. I just always have loved the fact that your friends weren't necessarily only the people in your class, but that you could connect with folks who were older than you and folks who were younger than you. It was just kind of an open family atmosphere all the way through. And on my third day, my class elected me as treasurer of the class. I couldn't believe it. Little did I know that our class was so small that we just took turns being officers and they figured I was new and hadn't had a turn, so they elected me. It wasn't like I was keeping books for a bank. I might have handled $25 for the class that year. However, my classmates will never know what that show of trust did for me. It, it ha there's a love for, that, for this place that it's hard to describe unless you've actually been here. Um, it's just a really special place. I, I roomed in college with a girl that graduated from here. Her picture's on the wall. And I graduated from a public school of 650 people. Huge class, huge school. And I remember her telling me she graduated with 20 something people. And I, I said, where is this school? And this was at Harding and she told me about Crowley's Ridge Academy. Later, I ended up moving to Jonesboro and ended up teaching. And I, I really think that was a God moment because she loved this place. And so when I was offered this job here, I was like, oh, I remember that place. <laughs> Laura talking about it. And Laura and I are still best friends. And uh, so anyway, I think that's a real special thing that my best friend graduated from here. And it's, it's like a home away from home, which I grew up in Tennessee and I did not grow up here at CRA or have, you know, have this experience. Um, the same way that my children did, but I love that whenever I walk in, it feels like I have family here. I know that I'm loved here. I know that um, that we have a history here now because my children have grown up here, and it's I don't know. It's it's warm and it's welcoming, and it's not like these big consolidated schools where it's all these new faces from day to day. It's it's a family. My experience at CRA was intentional. Everything that went on here had a purpose and a place. It never felt like anyone was just doing something just because whatever, it had a real purpose. You know, as a mom and um, my kids are now, my two oldest are in PALS and they'll go to CRA one day and it's really the value of Christian education and um, that's what stands out to me. The one-on-one -on -one student teacher relationships are incredibly underappreciated, uh, I think, among most people. They don't realize that just like when someone gives you their individual attention, it means the world. I never felt like I was ignored by the teachers here. If I needed help with something, I always got it. And I'm very appreciative of that. To know that my kids have relationships with their teachers, that they can go to them and ask for advice, and I know and trust that the advice that they're gonna get from their teachers is, it's not worldly advice, it's, it's Christian advice, and they're coming from a biblical worldview whenever they um, talk about difficult subjects with my kids, and I appreciate that. And I'm, I feel like my children have done well because of all of the positive influences they've had from their teachers. Even that first year, even though we struggled, we still were emphasizing a quality academic program in a Christian environment, and we still do that. The, uh, the spiritual atmosphere is just as important today as it was 40 years ago. Uh, our students still attend daily Bible classes. We feel like it's more important than any other subject they're taught. And they also have daily chapel devotionals. All of our teachers are Christian teachers. So we still have the same uh, spiritual emphasis that we did 40 years ago at the academy. And that's something we really tried to work hard at maintaining through the years because we wanted to remain true to the mission of the founding fathers of this school. That has been the amazing thing, as I observed through the years, is the commitment that everyone has to make it work. And it's beautiful and it made a great impact on my life. Probably, if I had not had this beginning, I might not ever have continued in teaching. It was fun. Uh, we, it, was a, it was a picnic, it was a ball. Uh, it, it was a group of camaraderie was unmatched.
John L's gone. Carl is gone. Monroe's gone. Esther. Not many of us left. I think of those people who were very instrumental in starting this school back in 1953. Uh, of course, Emmett Smith is still living, but a couple that I think of uh, incorporating board members like John L. Watson, uh, Monroe Lemons, who uh, gave a lot of time and energy as well as money to making sure this school got underway and was successful. I think they would be very, very pleased with what they see of this school 40 years later. And I think if the people of this community, the people of the state, the people of the nation, if they just caught a bit of the spirit of what's here, I think this school would never, ever want for financial resources. It would never want for spiritual resources. So I'm glad to be a part of this institution and, and always will feel a vital part of what's going on here. To sum up my experiences at CRA would be hard because they're varied. I've been a student, I've been a parent, and I've been an employee at CRA. But the thing that I remember that ties all those experiences together is the camaraderie of being with like-minded people. To know that day in and day out, you're associating with people who are going to be encouraging you in the values that you hold most dear, and not only me, but when we send our children here, encouraging our children in that. And so that is, for me, the reason, one of the reasons that um, I think my parents sent me to CRA, one of the reasons I chose CRA for my children, and then chose to work here. I wanted to be in that environment that would help me be the best Christian possible. You know, sometimes it, that changes based on the role that I'm playing that day. If I'm here to watch a ball game that one of my kids is in, then I'm a parent. Uh, if I've got something on my mind work-related, I'm an administrator. Um, and there are times you can walk in this building after it's been still and quiet, like in the summertime and the kids have been gone a while, you can walk in and it smells exactly like it did when I was a student here, which is really kind of comforting and a little strange, I guess. But it. It, it's just a neat feeling. It's a it's a unique smell, and and you just walk in and it takes you back to 1970 whatever or 1980 whatever, and you just think, yeah, some things don't change. There is a feeling of uh, satisfaction, a feeling of pride, a feeling uh, that you've been a part of an institution through the years that has done so much good through the lives of our. Uh, graduates who have gone in various parts of not only the United States but uh, throughout the world on the mission field and so there's there's just a feeling of, of pride and of being able to have been a part uh, of this uh, a great institution. Uh, I guess the feeling I get when I first enter the school today is the fact that the, the people today have continued that same spirit of building on the past and providing a school where families can afford to send their children and get a Christian education. And, and I appreciate the continued commitment I see from parents and other constituents of the school and for the staff members to maintain that spirit. When I walk through the doors, I look how much we've grown. <laughs> I, I look up on the walls to have all the graduation pictures and, and uh, that's because I taught here, I'm on several because I was uh, being the sponsors of the senior class, so they, you were put up on those too. So I'm, it brings back uh, when I walk into the gymnasium, all the games we played. Uh, when I go to chapel to see my granddaughters uh, in chapel, uh, it brings back memories. Uh, so it's, it's even though the, the people that taught me here are gone, I could probably name about eight or nine people that are working here that I taught that came from my classes. And that makes me feel good that maybe I had a small part in their life, in their spiritual life, that brought them back to CRA. So I think the, the future is just putting God number one in, in, in everything. And I know that our school will do that because this is the foundation of the school. If I could see CRA in 70 years, I would hope we were still teaching Bible every day, still having chapel every day, still um, 
educating kids for eternity. And I think that's the most important thing that we do. But in growth, that we maintain the foundation of those things that were important from the very beginning. Uh, in 70 years from now, I would like to see Crowley's Ridge Academy still standing firm to the main goal for which uh, this institution was built, a determination to uh, teach the young people the subjects that they need in this life, but most important to teach the Bible and biblical principles uh, to them to help them throughout their life. And I would hope that 70 years from now that the board is still making decisions based upon the principles contained in the Bible rather than the principles that would be dictated by the culture then in existence or even the culture now. I would like for us to be beyond just going with the culture, but staying true to the reason why this school was built, and that is to go back to the Bible. So right now our big challenge uh, is space. We are at a point at year 70 where we've grown to the point where we've pretty much outgrown the facility that we have. And so our choices are stop growing or try to raise the money to build something. And in that process, I've had a, a handful of people communicate to me that it's okay if we don't grow too large. It's okay if we stay a school of 325, 350, 400 students, whatever that magic number might be. And, and I, I hear what they're saying because it mattered to me when we first put our oldest child here as a kindergartner, we were asking those questions. And ultimately it was, this is a small, safe, place where he's going to learn the lessons we want him to learn. Um, so that, that smallness is, is critical to me that we don't outgrow the atmosphere that has made CRA what it has been for 70 years. I pray and I feel like and I hope the Lord's going to bless us as long as we continue to do the job we're doing now. 70 years from now CRA will be bigger. It will be, it'll do things that I probably won't imagine as technology and things like that develop but it'll still have a foundation in God's Word. It's not just about teaching reading and writing and arithmetic, as they say. It's about teaching them about God's Word, and I, I hope that'll still be here in 70 years. And maybe the buildings will change, and that might need to happen. But I, I think this, the mission of really teaching kids the heart of the matter is what's important. Keep so busy, what?